Hi, my name is Nikki Scorpio. Welcome to Scorpio Rising. And today we're going to be talking about limitations. Before we talk about limitations, we are going to focus on what we are grateful for. So take time right now. If you can close your eyes, think about things that you're grateful for, even if it's just one thing, even if it's just you made it through yesterday, that you have your health, even if part of you is unhealthy, that you know that you have anxiety, that you know that you have things that you're working on. Simple things. Focus on what you're grateful for. So I am grateful for expression. I'm grateful for the power of communication. I'm grateful for balance. I am grateful for people in my life who care about me. I'm grateful that I know that I'm never alone, even if it feels like I am. And I'm grateful for all the tools that I have for when I go through rough days, when I have you know, not so great days that there are different things that I can do to be good, to be great, or just to be okay, just to stay in balance. So I have a question for you. What would you do if you or somebody that you loved almost more than life itself got sick and needed a blood transfusion and the only person who could save them or yourself is the person that you strongly dislike? Think about that for a second. If the only way to save yourself or save somebody that you care about was through somebody that you hate, how real is that hate? One of the things that I learned that really helped me grow and evolve as a human is I realized that there was a story that I was telling myself because I felt abandoned. I felt unheard. I felt unseen. Although I was able to function and thrive in society, there were parts of me that didn't feel empowered, that were easily affected by other people's words. And then one day I found out about the concept of the story that we tell ourselves. When we were young, something happened to us and we didn't like the way that it felt. And then we told ourselves a story around that. And then we lived our lives recreating that story and validating that story subconsciously without even meaning to, without even knowing that we were doing it. And it shows up in different ways. And the interesting thing about this that we all face as human beings is that it truly is just a story, meaning that there is no meaning. How do I know this? Because there are people in this world who face death, who face poverty, who face different issues, just like you and I do. And they go on to live fantastic lives. They go on to live lives where that thing that happened to them doesn't mean anything. And it's not to say that person is better. It's not to say that person is perfect or they have it all figured out because we all have issues. We're all hard on ourselves in one or more areas of life. But think about this. Somebody in your life that you don't like or that you just say, I hate them, which I don't like to use the word hate. But let's just, let's go with strongly dislike. Somebody in your life, maybe you don't talk to them. Maybe you don't see them. Maybe you completely wrote them off. They were raised in an environment where they didn't learn how to love in the way that makes sense to you. And maybe they were giving even less love than you were. And they came into your life and they communicated in a way that you didn't like, that was unappealing to you, that was frustrating to you, that might have been aggressive to you. And then you interpreted that as you're not good enough, you're not worthy. Okay, it could be a family member, it could be a relationship, it could be a friend, it could be somebody from high school. Mine was multi-layered because as those of you who listen to my show know, I was bullied in high school. I was bullied in middle school. I put up walls, emotional walls, because I didn't trust people. And then I went on a journey because it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's so tiring being happy and then being not, being let down, expecting expectations, expectations on top of expectations. What if you told yourself a different story about that person? What if you told yourself that person was wounded and was hurting? The whole time, they were telling you that they loved you and they loved you. And instead of wanting forgiveness from them, what if you asked them to forgive you? Now, there are exceptions to this rule because there are people that do terrible things to people. However, I will tell you, I have forgiven people that have done stuff to me that I felt was unforgivable. 
and I asked for their forgiveness, mainly for holding in all of this resentment towards them and this hate towards them when they're family. Traumatic things. Traumatic things that only a handful of people in my life know about. Traumatic things that damaged the spark that I had, that damaged the innocence that I had. Didn't break it. It just got lost. And when I had conversations with these people and asked for them to forgive me for me holding in this anger when all that they were doing the whole time was saying, I love you, every person that I had that conversation with said that every day that they've been alive since those things happened, they've thought about it. Every day. Why are we having this conversation? Because anger and hate leads to sickness and disease. People in your life that are very sick beyond cold and flu have low immune systems, have chronic illnesses. A lot of the time, it's an emotional thing that happened. There are exceptions to every rule. I get that. I'm saying a lot of times in different religions, in different cultures, there is a belief you can look up metaphysical reason behind whether it's having throat issues, whether it's issues with your heart, you know, whether it's fatigue. These are tied a lot of times to an emotional thing that happened. And for me, the reason why I went on this journey is because I had so much anger. And it's interesting because I had really great friends. And some of those friends I don't really talk to too much because when I started to change, they didn't change. And that's cool. I don't need for people to change. However, I do require to have people around me like myself where if I'm wrong, I'll take responsibility and I'll hold myself accountable. I would like ideally to be around people that can call me out and I can call them out and they want to grow and want to evolve. If you, if you just want to stay yourself, if you're like, I'm of the earth and I'm going to be this way till I'm a hundred years old, that's cool. We can still hang out. I'm not going to tell you certain things because like there's certain parts of my life. If you're not a person who wants to grow and evolve, you won't understand. I can still have a good time with you and I can still love you because my love is unconditional. However, if you feel anger towards somebody, don't you want to let it go? It's not going to happen when you meet somebody new. It's not going to happen. When you get a different job, it's not going to happen. When you make more money, it's going to happen when you really have the conversation with yourself and say, this isn't who I am. And you know how I know that it isn't who you are? Because when you were a kid, when you were young, you were resilient. Do you have any kids in your life? Do you have any young people in your life? Or do you remember what it was like to be young? Or have you ever had any young cousins or nephews or kids in your life? And within the relationship of those children, do they have people in their life that are mean or have you seen them go through a tough time? Have you seen their parents yell at them and how they just kind of shrug it off? Because kids are resilient because they're connected to the source. They're connected to God and they get it. And then that wall shatters and then they grow up and they live how we do with these broken patterns of abuse and trauma and all these different things. It's actually a beautiful part of life. It's the illusion that we all live in. It's what makes us all connected. Before you hit double digits, 10, 11, 12 years old, and before you hit you know, 18 years old, 21 years old, life occurred to you very differently. And, and we don't realize these things because we live in this world where we have to just keep going and going and we have to hustle and we have to build now more than ever. People, everybody's teaching classes and there's Zoom meetings, there's webinars, there's Facebook groups, there's apps to, you can create groups, there's Clubhouse, there's all of these different things going on where people are trying to make sense of what's happening right now. We're just now starting to get back to being able to go outside and be around people. You know what's really wild? I'm more introverted, as I've mentioned before. This this COVID thing has has partially brought out the agoraphobia in me, and and that is the fear of going outside. I like going outside. I go outside. I still go outside. However, when I get around people now, if it's in a grocery store or something, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, get away from me. I love you. Get away from me. <laughs> I don't know if you can relate. But I'm aware of it so I can work on it and I can have different conversations with myself. I can be my own parent. I, I heard something that was really profound for me one day and it was 
After you hit 18, nobody tells you that you need to parent yourself. You need to teach yourself the lessons. You need to coach yourself. Do you want to be angry or do you want to have peace? Difficult, difficult conversations are my focus. I want to know that when I feel upset or uncomfortable, that I can, I can be calm in that, that I can stand my ground instead of walking away or hanging up or yelling or overreacting. And when I do, then I can apologize and I can take responsibility and ask for forgiveness. And at the same time, I can forgive people around me who do the same thing. Why? Because when I hit 70, 80, 90 years old, and as I continue to grow, I'm going to get happier and happier, and I'm going to grow younger and younger, and I'm going to have peace within myself. So that no matter what happens, locked down, unlocked down, in, out, introverted, extroverted, up, down, left, right, <laughs> I'll be good. And I wish that for you. And I realize that we don't often have people around us who have these conversations with us, but I do see how there is so much anger within people and there's so much anxiety within people. We make these like huge, huge, huge meanings out of certain things that happen that we, our whole career means this one assignment, this one deadline, this one conversation. We put everything on one piece of art. We put everything on one relationship, everything, all of our chips. And then we get mad when we don't get the expectation met. We get upset because the person didn't speak the way that we want to be spoken to. They didn't do it our way. Like we want to live in a world full of clones. We want to live in a world full of people that are like ourselves, and we don't have the patience to appreciate and to honor that that person is speaking differently. Don't you want to have peace? It's not, this is, this is the biggest thing that I want to talk about in this whole conversation. For people that are at the beginning phase of like, I don't like the way that I feel and I want to feel better. And you look at people that are motivational speakers, that are thought leaders, that are influencers, their life isn't better than yours. Their perspective might lead to them being more optimistic. They might have different tools and things that they can use. They might be doing all different types of things just to maintain what they think is a life of happiness and it might all come crashing down. I'm always amazed at how people don't believe in karma and I thank God that I went through tough times when I was younger, man, because people cheat the system and, <laughs> and then they get, they get into a place where there's no reset button. My goal is having peace. The money comes and the money grows. Did you hear that? I didn't say the money comes and the money goes. I said the money comes and the money grows. And at the same time, no matter how much happiness, no matter how much success, no matter how much wealth, no matter who you fall in love with, you will still have tough times. It doesn't just magically go away. If anything, focus and work on it now. If you want to have massive success, if you want to have a marriage, if you want to have a family, stop having kids when you're broken inside thinking that all of a sudden it'll become better. Too many people in my life hurting inside, building families, thinking that magically everything will get better. And that's cool. That's part of destiny. There's a balance within that. I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not some expert. I just, I hang out with so many different people. I, I have so many different walks of life around me. I have VP CEOs. I have people that, that have probably, I could imagine less than a hundred dollars in their bank account. I know janitors. I know people who own the building that the janitor is, is sweeping. Okay. Black, white, red, yellow, purple gay, straight, lesbian, trans, everything in between. And I wish that people could see behind the scenes of people that they don't get along with or they don't understand. I really do. Because people look at other people and they don't realize like you're jealous about somebody who, who hates themselves in some aspect of life in the same way you do. I think we all get frustrated at ourselves. I think we all look at part, even if it's 0.001%, even if you're Gandhi, there is still part of yourself that you strongly dislike, that you're just like, why does this part exist within me? Nobody is perfect. And when you can understand that, and when you can understand that nobody really knows what they're doing in this life, that's the beautiful part about being a seeker. That's the beautiful part about never just accepting something as it is. It, there are certain aspects of life where I feel like that it's healthy to just accept it as it is. And that's more so of I'm going to have good days and bad days. 
However, I don't accept that when I have a bad day that it's the end of the world and I'm a failure. I don't accept that if somebody yells at me and, and calls me names that that's who I am. I question things and I'm glad that I can question things because some people just live their life and don't even question it. Who is in your life that you haven't forgiven? Who is in your life? Who isn't in your life that you haven't forgiven? Who's somebody who did you really, really wrong and you get frustrated or feelings come up in your body, even thinking about it, even thinking about the conversation? You get upset, you get angry inside when somebody says you should forgive that person. I did that three times, three different people in my life. There was trauma, 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 trauma. There was three different people in my life I had to forgive. I had to. I know I don't have to, but I had to. Get into a relationship, in entertainment, as an entrepreneur, as a friend. I want to be a better person for people. I want to be a better me. I want to be comfortable in my skin. I wanted to stop looking at myself in the mirror and telling myself how ugly I was. I wanted to look at myself and love myself unconditionally. I wanted to know that when I got around people who were angry and took that anger out on me, that I could still have confidence and not fall into the insecurity trap. There is a reason why part of you feels unfulfilled. There is a reason why part of you feels upset or angry. And it's because there was someone in your life or something that you did where you haven't forgiven yourself. And in my personal opinion, you must forgive. So again, for me, I've done a lot of different seminars. I've, I've hung out with shamans. Um, I highly recommend that you check out Shaman Durek, D-U-R-E-K. Shaman Durek has a podcast called Ancient Wisdom Today. His meditations are off the charts and he's a good person. He has classes that are amazing. Every time I do one of his classes, I'm always just like, how do I feel this great? It's electronic. I'm not even there face to face. Forgive, forgive, forgive. So how does one forgive? How does one forgive somebody who has done them wrong to the point it's not like, oh, you dropped this thing. Oh, you broke this thing. Oh, you called me a name. It's deeper than that. How do we forgive people like that? Are you ready? Because this one's not easy. But if you want to forgive, if you want to feel better, if you want to get inner peace, you will literally feel like a weight has been taken off of you. And then the cool thing is, this is, this is why, this is, okay, let's get a little bit egotistical here. Okay, here, here is a <laughs> more self-absorbed reason why we should forgive. Because when we let go of the anger, when we let go of the depression, when we let go of the anxiety and the insecurity that we carry, amazing people come into our life. Great people come into our life. Fantastic people who are like, yo, you're a little weird, but I love you though. You're different. I like that. I'm telling you. I had somebody send me an article telling me that um, that I'm hypermanic, and there's it talks about the genius of that, and then there's the association of being manic. This is a homie. This is a friend of mine. My management knows. Sometimes they call me out. They're like, "Yo, Nikki, just be quiet for a second. I'm like, "Sorry, I get excited. <laughs> I get excited because ideas start coming in. My brain starts turning, and 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 I start channeling, and I connect with God. And it's like, "All right, cool. You're doing the same thing. Let me just be quiet for a second." <laughs> <laughs> forgive people to get better people in your life you can be the exact same person living the exact same house the exact same apartment the exact same room for rent the exact same guest house the exact same tent okay and you can forgive people in your life and then all of a sudden you will see changes i promise you this was the conversation that i had okay i'm not going to give the details i'm just going to give you kind of like a quote unquote like worksheet or like cheat sheet or something like that. Okay. So you call up the person, you FaceTime the person, you do a Zoom meeting, you see them, whatever. Okay. You talk with this person, you have a human interaction with this person and you find when the time is right and you say, whatever, you make your small talk and then you lead into it. And this is the basic conversation is I wanted to talk to you about something that I've been holding inside and I wanted to ask for your forgiveness because when this thing happened, I created this huge story in my, in my mind. And then I've been living thinking that this was the truth for years or for months, however long it's been for you. And I never thought of the fact the whole time that you loved me 
and I've been holding in this anger against you and it's not fair because you've been doing the best that you can and I'm, I'm hoping that you'll forgive me. I'm asking for your forgiveness. Do you know why that's so dope? Because that person doesn't expect for you because realistically, they did you wrong. Realistically, they did you wrong. This is the evolved 2022 approach. This is going into the future of I'm evolved and I'm a producer and I'm a problem solver and I'm going to level up and I'm going to stop being a victim talk. Okay, if you want to keep being a victim, that's cool. I get it. But if you want to grow and evolve, if you want to have peace, if you're like, I want to keep being myself and I want to be more myself and more myself and more myself, then you must forgive people. And the only way you can really get peace is by understanding that they're broken and they're hurt too. And chances are they feel guilt about the thing that you feel guilt about. So not only are you healing yourself, you're healing them. Look at you. You're like a regular mother Teresa. (laughs) Seriously though, it feels good. It feels good because now I can have real relationships with these people. And yeah, there will always be a part where there's limitations. However, I love them because I understand and I get that they're human just like me. And if I had a minute into their heart, into their mind, into their body, into their soul, I would probably be the same way. But we don't think about that. We think our life, our terms, our way, our conversation, our goals, our expectations, our needs. No, That's cool. Self-love is cool. Self-care is cool. But there are other people in this world that are also human, that also have feelings, that also feel unheard and unseen and unloved and unwanted. And you have power. You have power to forgive yourself, which I think is actually number one. You must forgive yourself for being hard on yourself. You can even do self-talk and you can do this in the privacy of your home, in your bathroom, when you're on the subway, wherever you live, in your car, if you're walking down the street, if you're just chilling. Anytime you get anxiety, you can just simply tell yourself, I love you. Here's what I like to do. I visualize myself when I was a child and I just start showing the five-year-old version of me all the awesome things that I have. I'm like, look, I have a telephone that I don't need to ask anybody if I can use and I can watch movies on that and I can make music on that and I can write songs on that and I can connect with people. Look at all these people that love me. Look at all these friends that I have all over the world. Look at these cool people in my life. Look at this. I posted something. I wrote something. 10 people liked it. Man, that algorithm is crazy on Facebook. I get 97 updates and, and, and two likes. But if I pay $10, Mark Zuckerberg will boost me up by a thousand. No, thank you. Look, I have a podcast. Top 100 in mental health. Look, I have a relationship. Look, people think that I'm cool. Look, I have a team. Look, I have people around me. And if you don't have a lot, show the version of you that's younger. Look, I have a wallet. Look, I have $2. I've had a job. Look at how I dress. Look. Look, go online. Look, people actually comment when I comment. How cool is this? Because the five-year-old version of you is going to be thrilled and, and, and amazed by anything, okay? Easy to please. It's, it's You just grew up and just started expecting for everything to be amazing all the time. <laughs> because you're human. That's cool. Forgive yourself. Forgive people around you. The world is is upside down right now. The levels of anxiety and depression and stress are through the roof. Don't you want to heal yourself and heal somebody else that you love? You love them. You love that person. Now, again, I know there are some people that are listening that are going to be like, I'm never going to forgive that person. That's cool. Okay. Forgive yourself, though. You're not responsible for anybody's feelings or emotions. It's not your fault that somebody passed away. It's not your fault that somebody's in a bad situation. You're not responsible for taking care of other people. That is guilt and that is shame. And I'll tell you, if you really want to learn about guilt and shame, go onto YouTube and type in B-R-E-N-E space B-R-O-W-N. B-R-E-N-E Brene Last name, Brown, Ted X. Amazing, amazing. She'll talk about guilt and shame and vulnerability and all that stuff that's scary to guys. <laughs> and women too. Come on, we're all human in this thing, okay? So it does get deeper than that. There is different reasons why people are how they are. And there's a really interesting thing. If you are a seeker like me, 
When you have conversations with people that are intuitives, that don't know anything about your life, you can ask people about people that are in your life and then they'll tell you like, oh, in this last lifetime, you killed this person or you guys fought or you were brother and sister. And that's why even though you're in a relationship right now that you fight this way, that you duel, it's wild. Also, this is going to be an advertisement. However, I only advertise things that I feel like are game changing. And this is actually something I did an episode, a couple episodes talking about this. And I reconnected with the company because I really like them. And there are other companies out there that are great too. I really want to tell you about Ormus. I want to tell you about a new alchemy, A-N-U-A-L-C-H-E-M-Y. I want to talk to you about Ormus. If you are a seeker and want to open up your third eye, connect your left and right brain, have better mental clarity, be able to focus more on manifesting. If you have issues with your gums, with your skin or anything of the sort, Ormus is really cool. It is natural. It is of the earth. And I'm going to leave a link in the show notes for you to check that out and hook you up, get you a discount. The first time that I took Ormus, I was feeling like I could almost read people's minds. I felt when people weren't trusting me. I felt when I wasn't present going into a meeting. Um, I definitely would make small changes. I knew that I shouldn't have certain foods and certain dietary foods, and that helped me and guided me through that. So if that resonates with you, definitely check that out. Other than that, my friends, I just wanted, I just wanted to share this because I, I realized that recently in my life, there were people that were talking to me about how they felt jealous about other people and other people's successes. And they felt angry about other people. And, and I've been there. I relate. Several years ago, I started catching myself on social media. I want to say like five years ago or something where I, I would get jealous. I'm like, I shouldn't be jealous of people. I would want to be in that same situation. And I know that that person didn't have it handed to them. And even if they did have it handed to them, they're still human. They're still hard on themselves. They still have to do a lot of work in order to get to a certain place. Even if it looks easy, it's not. Emotions are emotions. Feelings are feelings. And don't make somebody else's feelings not valid. Or when somebody expresses themselves, don't put them down for it because their feelings and their thoughts are real. Step into that world and feel what it feels like for something to feel real when somebody is speaking a truth. Just because they speak it doesn't mean you need to nod your head. If somebody's like, man, this life is hard. This life sucks. I hate myself. You do not, <laughs> you do not have to, you do not have to nod your head. You do not have to nod your head. I promise you. They're just letting it out. Okay. I do like the matrix and I duck that. <laughs> <laughs> or when I leave people, I will literally dust that energy off of myself. I will like take my hands and, and, and shake it off kind of like literally like dusting my shoulders off, but like the aura, the energy around me. Forgive somebody this week, forgive somebody this month, call somebody, have a difficult conversation with somebody. It's exhausting being angry and hating somebody from years ago, from decades ago, from months ago. Somebody who was a hurt individual who hurt you because their parents were hurt and it's a world of hurt. Don't you want to break the pattern? Don't you want to break the generational trauma? Don't you want to have somebody else also feel better? Don't you want to do something nice for people right now because you're just living in complete and total uncertainty? <laughs> it's in style now. Healing is in style. So be kind to yourself. Be kind to other people. We're all doing the best that we can. And we all come from a certain level of dysfunction. Share as much education as you can. Share as much healing and love as you can. Give yourself as much love as you can. Love yourself as much as you possibly can and beyond. You are amazing. You are powerful. You are great. You're a rock star. So we are going to end on that note my beautiful friend. And I just want to share with you, I've been making more beats and more music. So definitely connect with me on Instagram at Yo Nikki Scorpio, Yo Nikki Scorpio.com, Clubhouse. I am Yo Nikki Scorpio. If you're not on Clubhouse, send me a DM. I'll send you an invite because Clubhouse for education and for community is amazing. It's not like Instagram or Facebook. Super cool. You can have conversations with people you wouldn't normally have conversations with and learn and build and opportunities are happening right now. This is the greatest time to be alive. Okay. This is the greatest time to be alive. You are walking around in a history book that nobody can lie about now because everything's being documented.
health, communication, technology, everything is just like moving at a rapid pace. Enjoy the ride. Find the balance. If you're not okay, you don't have to put on a smile. It's okay to take a break. But remember, hurt people will hurt people. And people that are angry will take that out on other people because they're projecting. If you don't know about projecting, Google projecting anger, projecting emotions. Do not project your anger onto other people. And if somebody does it to you, you can use my line. I say, I'm not your bad day. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not your bad day. Sorry. I'm not your bad day. (laughs) It's good. Kind of upsets them though. So you got to be careful, but it is a good one. That's a Scorpio one. That is a Nikki Scorpio deflector. All right. I love you. Be kind to yourself. And as always, hit me up. Yo, Nikki Scorpio. If you feel alone or you feel unheard, thank you all for sharing, for supporting, for listening, for downloading. Definitely appreciate reviews. This isn't about me looking cool or having a million followers. I want to get these conversations and these topics to be common, to be mainstream, to be popular. So if you like these conversations, it helps when you share. It helps when you leave reviews. It helps when you spread this message to other friends and family members, people like yourself. It really, truly does because we all need to be able to understand how human and connected we are. We need to end hate, end racism, end homophobia, and all of these man-made titles that distract and disconnect us. I love you because if we can hate people we don't know, we can sure love them. Peace. Oh